Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing the second half of my January wrap up. Up in the cards I'm going to link to part one of my wrap up which was done a couple of weeks ago where I talked about all of the books I read in like the first two weeks of January and so in this video I'm going to be going over all of the books that I read in the last two weeks of January. Also I just wanted to quickly mention that in the part one video I talk about Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson and I mentioned that I was going to do a full book review on that book and it went up last week so in case you haven't seen it already and you are interested you can definitely check that out. Um, there are no spoilers in that video so you can feel free to like watch that whole thing without me talking about any spoiler parts. But anyways, on to the books that I read in the second half of the month. Slightly less successful reading in the last two weeks of the month. Not so much for the number of books that I read because I've read plenty this month, uh, but more for just like my own personal enjoyment of the books that I was reading. So first up I read A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle and this one I picked up for the Read Harder Challenge of a Read a Children's Classic and I didn't like this book at all. Um, I listened to this on audiobook and I think that might have something to do with my dislike mint. Mm, is that a word? I don't think so. <laughs> my dislike of this book. Overall the narrator was really good at telling the sort of like fantasy fairy tale children's story type voice to go with this book but Meg was so annoying. It felt like she was so whiny for so much of this book and her younger brother was kind of obnoxious to me too. Like not as much as Meg. He's supposed to be like four years old or something like that. Like they talk about him starting school next year or something along those lines which means he can't be that old and he's so precocious and I hate precocious kids <laughs> in books at least. Um, sometimes they can handle them in other forms of media but most of the time find them really obnoxious. Like at least if they had made him like seven or something like that I would have been slightly more okay with it but knowing what four-year-olds are like or what pre-kindergartners are like, no it drives me insane when characters are like that. Yeah I had a really hard time with this book. I'm not talking about plot at all because this is like a children's classic but basically this book has everything that I don't like in children's books. It has a whiny girl, it has precocious kids, and it deals with time travel and time travel is my least favorite fantasy device thing. Like I hate it in every form of media. There's very rarely been, I can't think of a single time where I've seen time travel executed well that I'm okay with outside of like the first Back to the Future and even that one I have problems with just because time travel in my head doesn't make sense at all and so it always just feels like there are these glaring plot holes that don't really work. So yeah, I didn't really like this. I'm sorry if this is one of your favorite children's classics. I think it's just one that if you read it as a 31 year old for the very first time you don't really enjoy it quite as much as you would as a kid. Um, but even as a kid this wouldn't be my jam when it comes to children's literature. So yeah, I read it. At least now I know. I won't be going on with the series obviously. All right and then next I read The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujatha Masi. This is a book that also fulfills the challenge of either read a mystery by a person of color or read a book set in one of the BRICS countries. This one takes place in India so it fulfills that requirement. I used it for that challenge personally. So this story takes place in 1921 in Bombay, India and you are following this character named Pureen who has been working to become the first female lawyer in India or in Bombay and it's based on the actual like first female lawyer in Bombay. She joins her father's law firm because obviously there are not a lot of places that are willing to hire a female lawyer and she ends up working on this case with these three Muslim widows. Their husband has passed away and so she's dealing with their wills and their estates and things like that and something just seems kind of off to her and so she goes to talk to the widows and then soon after she talks to the widows someone ends up dead and so it's up to Praveen to sort of figure out what exactly is going on in this situation and how this all went down and to ensure that no one else ends up dead. So overall I like this book. I didn't quite love it. I was slightly disappointed by it just because I had heard so many people at least over at Book Riot talking about how much they had loved this mystery book and it's good but it's not quite great. The thing that I really enjoy about it, Praveen is a really fantastic character. Um, she's really just a great lawyer and a great investigator and things like that. I like her relationship with her parents and even just like the way that she relates to other people around her because she is like the only female lawyer out there. She 
has a lot of barriers that she has to sort of push against and the way that she handles all of that is really well done. Um, the mystery itself was really interesting too. I didn't quite see it coming. This is more of like a straightforward detective type story so it isn't super fast paced so don't expect that going into this book. I think my main problems just came with one there's a backstory that they provide for Praveen which I feel like doesn't really add a whole lot to the story. I believe that they're trying to build just depth and a background for the main character which I understand but I feel like just wasn't handled very well. It just felt very boring. I felt like the more interesting parts of the story were her talking about her struggles in law school and her difficulties with that and there's sort of this other storyline that happens that felt unnecessary. I don't know if they're going to explore it more in future books but in this first book it didn't really do much for me. I was more interested in the main mystery part. Praveen also has a British friend that plays a role in the story but I found her friend to be really obnoxious and obviously like British people are in India at this time and are occupying India but man I just did not enjoy anything with them. I just found them to be a little bit annoying. I don't know if there's anything more than that. And also some of the stuff that they deal with felt really heavy-handed to me like the pro female's message felt kind of heavy-handed to me and even just like the stuff talking about India felt a little bit heavy-handed to me. Like part of me understands that obviously not everyone reading this book is going to have an extensive knowledge of what India is like and especially what India was like during that time period but sometimes it just feels like people over explain things or you can pick things up sort of like by inferring through the situation that's happening. Like you don't need to over explain that females are going to be discriminated against in this world and you don't have to over explain what marriages are like in India during this time period in my opinion. I don't know maybe other people won't be bothered by that because they don't have the normal exposure to it but as someone who is of Indian descent and obviously reads a lot of books based in India and around Indian culture I have that knowledge so whenever I see that stuff in books it always just feels super heavy-handed to me. So those are just a couple of reasons why I docked this book from being a complete four-star book but overall I thought it was a really enjoyable mystery and I'm definitely going to be reading more in the series as it comes out. All right next up I read The Gun by Fuminori Nakamura. So this author is a pretty well-known Japanese noir writer. A number of his books have been translated into English. This is the first one of his that I've read um, and this is the first one that he technically ever wrote but it was published later and I believe translated into English later than some of his other books. So I know a lot of people read this one after reading his other books and didn't really enjoy it that much but I actually like this one. It's not like my favorite. I don't have a lot of exposure with noir so it always takes me a little bit of time to adjust to that style but overall I really like this book. So in this story you are following this character named Nishikawa who is about like a college-age kid who one day stumbles across a body near the river and sees a gun lying next to him or lying next to the body. And so Nishikawa becomes sort of entranced by this gun and decides to grab it and take it home with him. And his mind just becomes completely consumed by the idea of this gun and his entire like personality and purpose just really changes and you sort of explore this journey that this character goes on as this gun sort of consumes his mind and spirit. There's a quote on the front of this book that says a thriller in the same elevated sense as is Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment or a Camus Camus the Stranger. Um, I've never read The Stranger but I've read Crime and Punishment and it definitely has that sort of feel to it or if you've read like The Telltale Heart it has like very much that sort of like tension and internal examination of like guilt and purpose and the way that this object sort of just consumes this main character's mind was really really fascinating. Um, It's a pretty short book. I read this one over the course of about a day which is probably how I would recommend reading it just because you sort of fall into this character's mindset and just staying there until the very end was so so interesting. It is a little bit of a slow burn but I think by the end it really really builds up and the way that the story ends overall is really strong. I definitely did not see this ending coming. You see sort of where it's leading to but you don't really see the complete picture until it happens and I just thought it was very very smart, very well done. I think I gave this one a three and a half out of five stars and I'm definitely going to be picking up 
more books from this author in the near future. And I uh, didn't say, but this book is translated from the Japanese by Alison Markin Powell. And I believe she's like translated all of his books. So uh, yeah, again, I'm just excited to read more from him. All right. And the final book that I read this month was 40 Acres by Dwayne Alexander Smith. This book is a thriller and holy cow, this book was completely an unexpected crazy ride for me. I didn't read anything about this book. Like I didn't even read the synopsis. The reason why I heard about it is because uh, Dee Dee from Brown Girl Dreaming read it a couple of years ago and I think she gave it a four or five stars and so I've had it on my radar ever since and I finally picked it up and it was such a thrill ride. Dwayne Alexander Smith is a screenwriter and so this book definitely feels like a movie like you can see all of the scenes playing out very vividly and that could be either a pro or a con depending on what you like in your books so in this story you are following this character named martin gray who is this black lawyer who at the beginning of the story is fighting this sort of civil suit against this other black lawyer named damon who is a really famous lawyer martin ends up winning the case and damon invites him sort of into his inner circle a very powerful black men colleagues. Um, there's like CEOs and real estate moguls and all of this stuff part of the circle and sort of as he becomes closer friends with them they invite him out on this trip and it turns out that this trip is not just like a simple camping trip there's a lot more going on it actually turns out that they are part of a secret society and I'm not going to say any more than that the synopsis tells you a whole lot more but I think that this is so much more interesting if you go into it blind because I went into it blind and the twists in here really just were crazy um, this is a book I'm actually going to do a full review on because there's a lot of stuff in here worth discussing so you can look forward to that probably next week if not the week after but yeah I give this a four out of five stars really great thriller if you are looking for a page turner chapters are like three to five pages at most most of the time uh, so it definitely keeps you hooked the whole time and you won't want to put this one down so yeah that's everything that I have for this video feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you read any of these books or if you have any questions on any of these books so yeah that's all I have for now and thanks for watching <laughs>